Today we're going to be installing one of our most common residential RO systems. U.S. Water Systems offers several RO systems to satisfy commercial as well as residential customers. There are several different types of styles and systems depending on your needs. This video will cover two of the most common residential U.S. Water RO systems. The Occupurion 5-stage RO system, which is one of the most common systems in the industry, and the Occupurion 5-stage Permeate Pump RO system. First, we are going to lay out the components and tools we will need to do the installation. Equipment Checklist When you unpack your RO system, lay out all the parts and identify them as follows. You should have a pressure tank, RO module, faucet, installation manual, and installation kit. Your installation kit should include your color-coded tubing, a filter wrench, the angle stop connector, tank valve, faucet connector, drain saddle, and the membrane. Tools you will need. To install your RO system, you will need a few tools to make the installation easy. You will need the following. A quarter inch drill bit, a faucet drill bit, which the size will vary depending on the type of faucet you use, a Phillips head screwdriver, tubing cutter or razor knife, channel lock pliers, or an adjustable wrench. Once you verify that you have all the parts and the tools, we will proceed with an installation. If you are missing any parts, please contact a customer service representative from U.S. Water Systems. Faucet Installation There are different styles and types of faucets. The faucet that will come with the RO system is a standard faucet. This faucet will have one connection for filtered water. This connection is a quarter inch quick connect fitting on the Aquapurion 5 stage and a 3 8 tubing fitting on the Aquapurion 5 stage plus and the Aquapurion 5 stage permeate pump RO. Standard faucet. To install the standard faucet you will need to decide on the location of the faucet. You can drill a new hole in the countertop or sink for the faucet or you can use an existing hole by removing the sprayer. The type of sink or countertop will dictate the type of drill bit that is needed to make the hole. In some cases you may need to have the hole drilled by a professional, especially when dealing with granite or other specific materials that require a special type of drill bit. These bits are typically expensive to buy to drill one hole and in this case it's better to hire it done. If a new hole is drilled for a standard faucet you will need at least a 7 16 inch hole and the hole should not exceed inch and a quarter. Once the hole is drilled you will install the faucet as follows. Install the escutcheon on the faucet then the rubber washer slide the faucet and the escutcheon and the washer into the drilled hole. You may want to have someone hold the faucet in place while the fastener is being tightened. Once the faucet is in place, put the black plastic washer on the bottom. If you drilled a 7 16 hole, install the black plastic washer with the flat side facing the sink. If you have an inch and quarter hole, install the black plastic washer with the beveled edge facing the sink. This will help center and secure the faucet when a large hole is used. Now install the lock washer and nut. Tighten the nut until the faucet is in place and secure. Next, install the quick connect fitting on the bottom of the faucet on the threaded tube. This fitting does not require sealant. It is a flange fitting that will seal on the flange on the threaded rod. Tighten the fitting hand tight and then tighten it with a pair of pliers or adjustable wrench about a half turn. The standard faucet is now installed. We will be connecting it to the system later in this video. Drain saddle installation. Next, we will be installing the drain saddle on the sink drain pipe. If you are using a standard faucet, you will need to use the quarter inch drain saddle. You will use the quarter inch drill bit to make a hole in the sink drain line. If you are using an air gap faucet, the drain saddle will need to be a 3 8 drain saddle and a 3 8 drill bit will be used. The saddle should be placed in the sink drain pipe between the P-trap and the sink. Do not install the saddle in the drain pipe before the P-trap. This could allow drain line gases to escape through the RO system drain line. In most cases, the saddle can be installed in the lateral pipe between the two sink tubs. Never install the saddle with the drain fitting facing down. The saddle should be installed with the fitting on the side or the top of the sink drain pipe. Mark the saddle location on the drain pipe and drill the proper size hole. 
Use a drill bit or a screwdriver to align the hole in the saddle with a hole drilled in the sink drain pipe. Put the saddle together and tighten the bolts with the holes lined up with the screwdriver or drill bit in place. It is critical that the hole in the sink pipe and the hole in the saddle fitting be lined up. If the holes are offset, the drain line will be restricted and this will cause a problem. Once the saddle is tight and the holes are lined up, remove the screwdriver or drill bit from the fitting. The drain saddle is now installed. We will be making the connection to this drain saddle later in the video. Inlet feed valve installation. The inlet feed valve or angle stop valve will need to be installed to connect the RO system to your water supply. Your RO system will come with an angle stop valve. This valve is designed to be installed in the cold water line to the existing sink faucet. Turn the cold water and the hot water valves off for the existing sink faucet. Relieve the pressure at the faucet. Remove the whip hose or tubing from the cold water valve from the existing faucet. Install the angle stop valve on the existing faucet cold water supply valve and tighten it. Install the whip hose or tubing for the existing sink faucet to the top of the angle stop valve and tighten it. Be sure the angle stop valve is in the off position. The valve is in the off position when the handle bisects the outlet tubing connection. With the angle stop valve off, turn on the cold and hot water supplies for the existing sink faucet. Check for leaks at the angle stop valve, and if you have leaks, repair them now. Once the valve is installed and there are no leaks, the inlet valve is installed. We will be making the connection for the RO system later in this video. Pressure tank installation. Remove the pressure tank from the box. On the pressure tank, there is a threaded port on the top of the tank. Wrap Teflon tape on the threads on the tank in a clockwise direction. Usually four to five wraps is sufficient. Install the tank valve on the tank by turning it clockwise until hand tight. Tighten the valve an additional half to full turn with pliers or the adjustable wrench. The valve is now installed on the tank and ready for connection. We will be making the connection later in this video. Also, on the pressure tank, there's a blue plastic cap that covers the air bladder inlet valve. The tank bladder should have 5 to 7 psi of air pressure in it when the tank is empty. The pressure cannot be lower or higher than 5 to 7 psi or the tank will not function properly. The tank can be installed in the upright position or on the side. If the tank is installed on its side, use the supplied tank base to secure the tank. The tank bladder pressure is factory set, but it's not a bad idea to check it. RO system module. The RO system module will come with color-coded hoses. This tubing will be connected to the previously installed connection points and the manifold. The color coding is as follows. The feed water supply is orange. The faucet supply line is blue. The drain line will be black and the tank line will be green. When installing the module, the tubing can be cut to fit with the system secured in the sink cabinet. However, I like to leave the length of the tubing on the RO module so it can be removed from the cabinet while changing filters. The system will connect as follows. Inlet supply connection. The orange supply line for the RO system module will be connected to the angle stop valve and the existing sink line faucet supply and to the port marked in on the sediment filter housing. Push the orange tube into the quarter inch fitting on the angle stop valve as far as it will go. The orange tube should be connected to the sediment filter inlet fitting on the RO system module. Be sure the line is completely pushed in. Pressure tank connection. Now attach the green line to the pressure tank valve. The green tubing will be connected to the post filter inlet T on the RO system module. Be sure the tank valve is in the on position. The tank valve is in the on position when the handle on the valve is in line with the tubing connection. Drain line connection. If you're using a standard faucet, Connect the black drain line from the RO system module to the drain saddle previously installed on the sink drain pipe. This black line will be connected to the flow restrictor on the Aquapurion 5 stage RO systems and on the brine out port on the permeate pump Aquapurion 5 stage system. Push the tube in the saddle connection if the saddle is a quick connection type. If you have the threaded saddle with a nut, put the nut on the tubing and slide the tubing into the saddle. Tighten the nut hand tight by turning it clockwise. 
Tighten the nut an additional half turn to full turn with a pair of pliers. Faucet connection. Connect the blue line to the previously installed faucet supply fitting. Push the blue line into the fitting as far as it will go. The blue line will be connected to the post filter outlet fitting on the RO system. If you are using an air gap faucet, the other tubing connections are as follows. Connect the black quarter inch tubing from the RO system module to the quarter inch hose barb on the bottom of the faucet. Push the tubing over the hose barb as far as it will go. This black line will be connected to the flow restrictor on the Aquapurion 5 stage RO system. For the Aquapurion 5 stage permeate pump RO system, the black quarter inch line from the faucet connection will be attached to the brine out connection on the permeate pump. Now connect the black 3 8 tubing to the 3 8 hose barb on the bottom of the faucet. The other end of the 3 8 black hose will be attached to the 3 8 drain saddle that was previously installed. The faucet and drain connections are now complete. Once all the connections are made, you will move to the startup procedure. Startup procedure. If your filters were not installed in the system, install them now. The sediment filter will look similar to the roll of paper towels. This filter will be installed in the first vertical sump. The sumps can be removed by turning them counterclockwise. Put the filter in the sump and install the sump on the system by turning it clockwise. The filter sump only needs to be hand tight. An additional quarter turn can be applied with a supplied filter wrench if desired. The carbon filters will be installed in the second and third vertical sump. The membrane filter will be installed in the membrane housing, which is the bottom horizontal filter on the top of the bracket. You will need to remove the quarter inch line from the cap side of the membrane housing. You can do this by pressing the collar on the fitting toward the fitting with your fingernail and pulling the tubing out. When pressing the collar, the tubing is released and can be pulled out of the fitting easily. Now remove the cap by turning it counterclockwise. Now install the membrane in the housing. You will need to push the membrane all the way in the housing. Be sure it is all the way in and is seated in the housing. Now reinstall the cap and push the quarter inch tubing in the fitting on the cap. Your filters are now installed and you are ready to start the system. Turn the angle stop supply valve to the on position and let the system begin to fill. Once you see water start to dribble out of the faucet, close the faucet. Let the system fill up with water. Depending on the size and style of the system, the fill time may be two to three hours. When the system is full, you will no longer hear water running to the drain. Once the system is full, open the faucet and let the water run until the faucet is down to a dribble of water coming out of the faucet. Now close the faucet and follow this procedure again. After the tank and system have been flushed two times, close the faucet and let the system fill. The water is now ready for use. You may see some black colored water coming out of the faucet during the flushing process. It will kind of resemble tinted glass. This is normal. The system is flushing carbon fines out of the post carbon filter. This should clear up after the second flush. In most cases it will clear up during the first flush. Your system is now installed. Now that it is installed, I want to talk to you about maintenance and general operation of the system. General operation. As you use water from your system, it will automatically fill back up. It is normal for water to be running to the drain while the system is filling, regardless of the faucet position. Your RO system will waste around two gallons of water for every gallon of pure water it makes. This is how reverse osmosis systems work. When the system is full, the water will stop running to the drain. You should periodically check the performance of your RO system. This can be done with a TDS meter. TDS is an acronym for Total Dissolved Solids. The RO system will reject 80 to 97 percent of the incoming contaminants. A TDS meter will give you a value in ppm, or parts per million. To test the efficiency of the RO system, take a TDS reading of the incoming water or non-treated water from the existing sink faucet cold water. Now take a TDS reading at the RO system faucet. You will figure your system's efficiency using the following formula. Raw TDS minus RO TDS divided by raw TDS times 100 will give you percentage of efficiency. Example, the raw untreated TDS reading at the existing sink faucet cold water is 338 parts per million of TDS and the RO faucet TDS reading 
is 28 parts per million. So 338 parts per million minus 28 parts per million equals 310 parts per million. Divided by 338 parts per million equals 0 0.92 times 100 equals 92% efficient. Your system should always be 80 to 97% efficient. If not, there is a problem with the system. Typically, this indicates a bad membrane filter. Membrane filters will typically last three to five years in systems that are fed with soft, iron-free water. If your water is not being used regularly, you should drain the tank at least once a week to prevent the water in the storage tank from going stagnant. Ice maker installation. An ice maker may be connected to the RO system. RO water will make crystal clear ice. There is an ice maker kit that can be purchased at uswatersystems.com. This ice maker kit is only compatible with the Aquapurion 5 Stage Plus and the Aquapurion 5 Stage Permeate Pump RO systems. Both of the aforementioned systems will have 3 8 tubing for the tank and faucet connections. The standard Aquapurion 5 Stage system will only have a quarter inch line running to the tank and the faucet, and this is not recommended to be used with an ice maker kit. 3 8 tubing is crucial when supplying an ice maker. System maintenance. The pre-filters in the post-carbon filter should be changed once a year. In some cases, the frequency may be more often depending on the feed water quality. The membrane filter will last three to five years on most systems depending on the feed water quality and the amount of water used. The system should be sanitized each time the filters are changed. If you get your replacement filters from U.S. Water Systems, the American-made filter pack will come with sanitizing chemical as well as filters and detailed instructions. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please contact one of our certified water specialists at U.S. Water Systems. The phone number is 1-800-608-USWA or 8792. Enjoy your RO water.